Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Just, I'm just so, I'm just so full in seeing you here with us today. I really, really, really am. And you are living witness that God can raise a person from the potentially dead. Living witness. I see you, Bishop. And the, and I'm going to just say it as a roll on. Bishop, what God must have in store for you after this. Woo! Church, I hope we're ready. I hope we're ready. I really, 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 really hope that we are ready. I really hope we are. So let me just say good morning, Vision family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I want to thank Dr. LaCara Foster, Minister A.J. Reynolds, for just being magnificent hosts. Just thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your willingness. Thank you for your desire. Thank you for your pillarship. Yes your willingness to hold up the institution in this moment, in this interim. We are just so happy and we're so glad about you. Um, and so many people have birthdays today. I, the only one I'm gonna shout out is Mario because I know it's his birthday. What's up, Mario? Happy birthday, my good brother. Yes, 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 yes. What a joy, a joy, joy, joy to be here. And um, I do have a word, I do have a word, I do have a word. And it's a little dangerous word. It's a little dangerous. But the truth is that we are in dangerous times, right? We're in times right now where you'd better take a chance if you're going to survive. You'd better risk it all. Ha <laughs> ha! Listen, you better risk it all if you're going to make it through this. And so this morning, just for a minute or two, I want to speak to you from Philippians. That's right. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Philippians 2 five through nine. I'm going to read it for you and then I'm going to take you through it. Philippians two, five through nine. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of the servant. Mm and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath also exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now listen, I'm gonna try my best to stay calm. I'm really, really gonna try my best to stay calm in the middle of this. I'm really going to try my best to stay calm in the middle of this. But if you walk with me, we'll be in the ether in just a few minutes. I want to preach from the subject. And I'm, I'm not really a preacher. You know what I'm saying? I, I really think of myself kind of more as a teacher, more as an exhorter. So, you know, okay, okay, okay. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject. Change your mind. Change your mind. Help me to help me. Oh, God, God, help me change your mind. That's right. Change you change it, not wait for it to be changed. You change it, change your mind. But you got to know who you are. You have to know what your mind is. You have to know the power of your mind. And I'm about to show you not to look dangerous. But listen, again, we're in dangerous times. So I'm out there. I'm out there. I'm out there. So I'm going. I'm going. Come on and go with me. First one says, let this mind be in you. Let. What does that mean? Allow. Give it permission. Oh, God. Give it permission. Invite. Let this mind be in you. Now, the question is, what mind? This mind. Well, whose mind is it that God wants to be in you? Whose mind is it? that God desires to be your mind. Let this mind be in you. Oh, so God wants somebody's mind to be in me or God wants me to have a mind like somebody. Okay, that's fine. Who? He goes on to say, which was also in Christ Jesus. Ooh, help me, oh God. Let the mind that God, that Jesus had be in you. Let Jesus's assumptions about himself be your assumptions about yourself. 
Let what Jesus assumed about himself be what you assume about yourself. Let Jesus' mental preoccupation be your mental preoccupation. Let Jesus' cosmological orientation be your cosmological orientation. Hey, God help me on today. Let that mind be in this mind. Woo! Now the question becomes then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, y'all with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, all right? Then the question becomes, what was in that mind? Y'all have to forgive me. You just, I just saw Bishop. You really just have to forgive me. You're going to just have to forgive me, y'all. I just can't take it. What was in Jesus's mind? Well, verse, verse, verse six tells you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God. Y'all, I really, I don't know I'm going to be able to take it. What does this mean? Jesus had a mind that he was in the form of God. Jesus had a mind, Jesus believed, Jesus thought, Jesus surmised, Jesus guessed that he was walking around in the form of God. So the scripture is saying you too must believe that you are in the form of God. That's right. Why? Because it says, let that mind be in you. Listen, you're supposed to believe that you're walking around in the form of God. Woo! Who what? Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, what? You know what Jesus assumed? It takes nothing away from God for him to believe that he is divine. It takes nothing away from God for you to believe that you are miraculous. It takes nothing. There is no robbery on God's part if you believe you're holy. There's no robbery on God's part if you would coexist with God. God is not so insecure that God cannot share divine space with you. <laughs> it is no robbery unto God if you believe that you can part the waters. There's no robbery unto God if you believe that you can call the wind and the wind would obey you. God is not offended if you believe you are holy. Woo! That's what Jesus did. Who? Uh huh. Being in the form of God, uh huh. Walking around in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, equal with God? Equal? That's what the word says, equal. Equal, which means I share the same power of God. I share the same power God has. Hey, uh-huh, equal. It's not robbery. It's not robbery. It's not robbery to be equal with God. But here's the catch. Oh, God, help me this morning. Let this mind be in you, black people. People, change your mind. Get out of this notion that I'm, I'm not very much, I'm insignificant. I'm so full of hurt, right? I have so many issues. Listen, get out of that mind and let this mind be in you. The one who assumed himself equal to God. That's the mind you're supposed to have. That's the mind that's supposed to be dwelling in you. That's the mind you're supposed to be walking around with. Now, how do you know? How do you know? Come on, somebody. How do you know if, in fact, you are walking equal with God? Well, verse 7 tells you that. <laughs> but made of himself of no reputation. Listen, if you believe you're divine, there needs to be no announcement. Ooh, if you believe you're divine, you don't have to say anything to anyone. You don't have to argue about yourself. You don't have to argue for yourself. You don't have to argue against other people about who you are. Made of himself, no reputation. In other words, we don't need any placards. We don't need any signs. If you walk in divinity, your divinity will speak its fullest truth for you. There's nothing for you to say. <laughs> There's nothing for you to say. Jesus didn't walk around saying, hey, listen, do you know who I am? 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 Do you know what I can do? Do you know what I can do? In fact, what's so heavy is other people will say, were saying about him, who is that? Who is that? Who is that man? And they even came to Jesus and said, Jesus, who are you? Who are you? Because if you'll, if you'll leave your divinity, unto its own work. It will do its own reputation. It, it'll make its own announcements for you. There's nothing you need to say. 
but made of himself no reputation, verse seven says, and took upon him the form of a servant. Ooh, God as a slave, what? God as a servant? And if you understand me, black people, particularly this notion of took upon him the form of a servant, we really can't connect with that. But because we were we were officially formally servants for 400 years. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So the servant, the servant is divine. Hey, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody took upon himself the form of a servant, humbled himself. In other words, when you walk with God, you know what you really start doing? You ask other people, how can I help you? What can I do for you? Is there a way I can enhance your being? Because a person who walks in divinity knows one thing. Everything I have, everything I'll ever need is already provided. It's already provided. It's already done. So only thing I need to do the rest of my days is serve you. <laughs> Why? Because God has already served me. If you understand, if you have the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you. Change your mind, people. Change your mind, people. Change your mind. Took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. In other words, Jesus came in the form. Now, this is going to kill you. It's going to kill you. In the form of a man. Not as a man, but in the form of a man. Now, if y'all gonna really walk with me, you're in the form of a man too. You're in the form of a woman. That's right. Every single one of us. Hey, you're in the form of a man. You're in the form of a woman. But that's not the totality of who you are. You're in a woman's body. You're in a man's body. That's the form. But your spirit is bigger than that form. Your spirit is bigger than that form. But if you're not careful, we have limited and in fact defined and categorized ourselves and constructed our identity around the form in which we have come. Come on, somebody, come on. Listen, if you take a glass, if you take a glass and pour water in that glass, uh huh, the glass will hold the water, but the glass is greater than the water. Uh huh. Here's how you know because you can pour that out and you can pour wine in that same glass and it'll hold that. You can pour oil in that same glass and it'll hold that. Come on, somebody, you can pour sand in that same glass and it'll hold that. In other words, the glass is really a container of whatever it needs to be. You can't define the glass by what it holds because it can take it and it can let it go. Oh, God, help me. And so you. And so can you. That's the thing. So can you. Yes, we can walk upon the earth. Yes, we can. But what the scripture is trying to tell you is you can really levitate above it, too. If you had the mind that Jesus had, if you had the mind that Jesus had, you can understand that even in the midst of an epidemic, the earth is just cleansing itself and writing itself. That's what's really going on, right? That this, this shift is really happening, right? To give us all a chance to start again, to give us a clean slate, if you will, to move, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. But you'd have to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who believed himself equal with God. And so should you. You're only powerless because you think you are. See, all of this is about what you believe. Because the first scripture says, let this mind be in you. In other words, would you mind? Would you mind? Would you mind if God gave you God's mind? Are you okay with that? Would you give God permission to make your mind holy? Would you? Would you give God permission to do it? Woo! Listen, verse eight, and I'm gonna try to come on up out of here. And being found in fashion as a man, somebody please help me this morning. What is that fashion? Right? I think when I think of fashion, I think of clothes. I think of presentation. I think of attire. Being found in fashion as a man. In other words, this body, this manness, this womanness is a cloak. Come on, somebody. This is clothes. Gender. This gender is a cloak. It's a cloak. You can put it on and you can take it off. But if you take it off, what is underneath? What do you have if you can't hide behind the constructs of gender anymore? If you can't argue, if you can't make a case 
for the category in which you define yourself, what would you have? And that's what this scripture is about. Let this mind, being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Why? Because in this fashion, uh, he's, and listen, I'll take it. If I have to go to earth and if I have to go as a man, that's fine. That's fine. I will. I'll go as a man and became obedient unto death. Why? Because men die. Women die. If I have to go as a man, that means at some point I'll have to die. I'll take it. But I'm going to show the earth. I'm going to show the world what spirit looks like in the fashion of a man, in the fashion of a woman. See, don't define yourself simply as a man, simply as a woman. No, understand that this, that this beingness if you will, uh-huh, this beingness is a cloak. The spirit, the mind beneath it is greater. Listen, most of us have a closet full of clothes. Woo! And most of them we don't even wear. Most of them we don't even wear. Why? Because taking clothes off and putting them on becomes, it becomes a chore. It becomes tedious. Right. And what I'm really saying is what we all realize is the grandeur of you is not in your closet. Ooh, now you can walk with that many ways. The grand, your grandeur is not hanging in your closet. Your grandeur is in your being. Your grandeur is in your spirit. Right. Your grandeur is in your soul. You don't get more beautiful when you put on clothes. No, you get a greater presentation. Listen. Your beauty didn't shift because you put on some clothes. It did not. Your mask became more excellent, but your beauty did not shift. Let this mind be in you. God didn't say, get Jesus's clothes. God didn't say, measure Jesus's waistline. You gotta say, it. God didn't say, get Jesus's shoes. No, 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 no. Why? Because those things are fleeting. They come and they go. No, no, let Jesus's mind be in you who thought himself divine. Yeah who thought himself holy, who thought that he was righteous, who, who really assumed that it wouldn't rob God of anything if he too believed himself divine. And let that mind be in you. Never agree that you ain't nothing. Never agree that you're broke. Never agree that you're hungry. Never agree that you're a failure. Never agree that my life has been nothing but regret. Never agree, never agree. Rather, let transformation come. And if you want to be something else, then decide it, then decide it, decide it and come on and do it. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Ooh, somebody help me. Ooh who being in the form of God, y'all, I'm about to cry, thought it not robbery, thought it not robbery to walk with God side by side. God is not insecure, y'all. God is not insecure. If you think you're holy, God does not disagree. God will take it. All God is saying is if you're going to be holy though, right? If you're going to be holy, you don't need to be grand. Do you know God is all powerful and God never says it? God is all knowing and God never tells what God knows. Ooh. God is all everything and is the humblest, is the most humble entity in this cosmos. Because if you're God, there is nothing else to say. Amen. <laughs> I was like, Courtney, don't bring, don't bring me up. Don't bring me up. Courtney, don't bring me up. Courtney, do not. I'm not ready. Oh, uh, my Lord. Dr. Black, if listen. you are holy, you don't need to be grand. Whoo. I, I, I dare everybody to go back and listen to this again. Oh, I'm going to. Listen. Uh, like, 
I was listening to everything he was saying, and it just it was confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. Even the whole talking about the closet. I I just told you we cleaned out our closet because we have all these things that we don't need and we don't wear. That's and right. as I was cleaning out my closet, I felt my mind become freer. I felt myself become more liberated. Yeah. And I felt myself be able to like really look for opportunities to serve, just as uh, Dr. Black said. I yes. am, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I've been doing these lives every every night. I'm doing a, a 40 day uh, uh-huh. in the wilderness experience. And what I realized yesterday night, and I told my, my people who come on and check it out, I said, if, and this is for me, I said, if I am the same person going into this quarantine and, and coming, you know, the same person mm-hmm. coming out, I have wasted my time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, yeah. Is yeah. this is our opportunity to transform, much like Bishop said. Like, if you're a writer, write. What else you gonna do? Right. You ain't got nothing else to do but no. the thing that you have been given to do. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, this was absolutely phenomenal. So yes. I like to call Dr. Black my personal Grio. Yes. Um, he is an amazing storyteller, and he always um he always provides us with a message that calls us to harken back to our yes. ancestors and the yes. things that they've endured. And I really appreciate that about him. And I want, I really want to shout, shout him out real quick. Um, I'm rereading one of his books, uh, The Coming. Which Listen. Is right here, my bookshelf. Listen. The Coming. Yes. And, yes. It is, and it is a narration of our ancestors through the Middle Passage. And um, I've been reading it again. And outside of just being an amazing writer, Yes. Um, it's just a great, a brilliant storyteller. And I just yes. really um, appreciate him for what he's done in my life. Um, and I really encourage everyone, if you've never read any of Dr. Black's books, please, please, please check him out. I got I got a few of them here. We got yes. to tell me of a home. I, I think I lent perfect piece to somebody yes. and they didn't oh, give it back. Out. Your book out. They didn't give it back. I'm going to have to get that back from them. But yes. um, please make sure to uh, check out Dr. Black. His, he is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Brilliant Thank writer. You so much for continuing to pour into the Vision Nation family. Thank you so much, so much, so much. Thank you, Dr. Black. I, listen, I'm going to get off of here. I am going to read. I'm going to read this scripture again. Right. Oh, and yes. I'm going to listen to this word again because I could I had to stop taking notes. I, I was like, I hope nobody can see my face here in the green room. Because I'm like, I'm, at some point I was like, I'm just gonna lay down and just on this floor and just gather my <laughs> together. I gotta gather yeah, I my take it. I started taking notes and I was like, you know what, let me just be a sponge. Let me just sit and take this in. Um, because it was absolutely brilliant. Um, yes. um but we want to thank you all so much for joining us on this yes. Sunday. Um, thank you Bishop, for getting on with us and, and giving us a word of encouragement and let us, letting us see your, your face and hear your voice. Yes. Uh, it, it is good for the people. I got so many um, calls and messages last week just from people saying they just needed to see and hear. And I think that that yes. was really good. So just for him to even be able to get the strength up to, to come out on here and just share with us for a couple of minutes. And you see, he didn't did something different with his face. You got a little goatee going on. <laughs> I said, okay, I see you. I see yes. you, Bishop. <laughs> yes. Don't forget about our challenge. Yes. Our, uh, yes. Avoid the Q15. Please don't forget about our challenge. I'm not going to forget about it. Post up your videos and recipes and anything that you have for us. Upload those videos for us. And also, don't forget Youth Churches Today at one o'clock for the elementary kids and two o'clock for middle and high school kids. Um, Make sure that you also um, join us on tomorrow night at six o'clock for a very special conversation with Minister uh, Kyle Lamont. Yes. Really excited about that. And um, again, always continue to support us. Let us know how we can support you. Um, We are a family, even though we may be in isolation, we are still connected. Yes, and Love give, you. give, give. Don't forget to give, give, That's give, right. give. You can That's use right. a cash app if you haven't yet. Anything, anything, give anything. Dollar sign uh, TVC ten ten ten. And uh, with with that, let's just say a quick word of uh, prayer for our benediction, and yes. we will leave you to be with your families. Kind Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together and worship and lift your name high. We thank you so much for our Bishop, Bishop O.C. Allen. We ask that you continue to 
touch him, continue to heal him, continue to strengthen him, and continue to encourage him to rest. We thank you for our speaker, Dr. Daniel Black. We pray that you would extend an extra special blessing to him for his awesome uh, commitment to us and for his continuous sacrifice of pouring into us. We ask that you restore virtue back into him 10,000 fold. We thank you for everyone who has joined us. We thank you for everyone who is supporting us with their giving. We thank you for everyone who is listening. We ask that you continue to protect us, protect yeah. our homes, protect our families, protect our health. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that through this, we will continue to give your name glory, honor, and praise. We decree and declare it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you. We, we love, love you. you. We love you. Continue to reach out to us, and we'll continue to reach back to you. Have yes, a wonderful, we love wonderful you. Sunday. Stay safe. Have a wonderful Sunday and safe week. Love you, Minister. Love you, too.